Perfect is the enemy of good, or at least that's what Voltaire said in 1770 according to this Wikipedia article. And the same goes for making video for your students. Many of you have asked, what do I use to make videos? TLDR, this is what I use to shoot videos. I use an Equitech E100 made by Connaught Audio Devices, plugged into a Zoom F4 multi-track field recorder. I use a Fujifilm X-T3 on a small rig clamp connected to my Dell monitor. I edit in Premiere Pro. I sweeten audio in Adobe Audition and remove noise. And I use color balanced LED lighting with a softbox. But that doesn't mean that you need to do this. This is just a part of my professional practice and my personal interest. And what I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time telling you about how I think about how you could make videos, how you could do so with things you already have at your disposal, and then some of the ways that you can improve that video, and then what I use to make videos. First of all, if you're just starting out, it's probably more helpful to think about what will make your video more successful for your learners. And really the success or failure of your video is gonna be hinged on whether your video is in time for your students, whether it captures a process or conveys the idea correctly, whether the content is planned and well-organized, whether it serves the learning outcomes of the course, and then finally, as long as it meets the minimum required fidelity. What makes great videos, or rather, what kind of videos do people actually watch? And generally speaking, the research over the last few years has shown that people watch shorter videos. And if you look at average engagement versus video length, the boundary point is generally 12 minutes. If you go over 12 minutes, you're heading into the danger zone. If you're gonna deliver a long lecture, you may want to break it up into chunks. This allows your learners to digest that material in smaller pieces. It's also good for you because if something goes wrong with your video, with the capture of it, you haven't actually spent a whole bunch of time talking to a camera that's not actually recording anything. I discovered the first time I did this video, I didn't turn on my audio recorder. You should make a plan for your videos, whether that's a quick text-based OneNote document or a storyboard or sketching out a few point form notes. Just make some kind of plan. Even if you deviate from it, you've got an idea of what's going to happen and the ideas that you want to convey. Now that I've told you that you should plan, you should have videos that balance the right amount of planning and spontaneity. I have to say that I'm actually using a IT services knowledge base article as my guide for this video. It doesn't contain everything I'm gonna say, but it's a perfect outline. Students want your presence in the course. And one of the ways in which you provide presence is through video. And being a real person in the video will help make that connection with your students. You should try to use several different approaches in making your videos. For example, if you're trying to demonstrate a process, what you might find helpful is to document the process, so shoot it with your camera, and then narrate it afterwards. Quite often, it's unnatural for you to narrate something as you do it. People don't do that in real life. So earlier I talked about the minimum required fidelity. And honestly, for most people, that's 1080p HD video. And any smartphone will shoot 1080p HD video from the rear camera and probably from the front facing camera as well. Every iPhone since 2011 shoots 1080p HD video. And the quality of this video is pretty remarkable. Here's an example. And this is what the iPhone 8 front-facing camera video looks like and the audio. One handy thing about it is that it has a screen that I can see as opposed to my Fujifilm X-T3, which I love. Uh, the screen doesn't flip around. It flips up this way and down this way, but you know, it doesn't flip all the way around. There's no need to shoot in 4K. 4K will generate larger files, is more difficult for your computer to edit, is larger to store, and ultimately most of your viewers are going to be viewing your video in 1080p anyway. So while you will experience an incremental benefit in quality, the amount of headaches that you'll create in trying to manage that content will slow you down. And really what's most important is being able to create that video as quickly and easily as possible. It's been said many times before that People will tolerate bad video so long as the audio is good, but bad audio will kill your video every single time. No one wants to listen to bad audio. So how do we make sure that we get good audio? Here are a few options. 
First of all, if we're working with things that we already have, like our smartphone, get close to the microphone. The further you are away from any microphone, no matter how good it is, the worse audio quality you will get because you will have more background noise and a lower signal to noise ratio. I was going to recommend you use the Apple EarPods, but after testing them, I can't honestly recommend it and just use your iPhone. Here are some low cost options. One of them is smartphone based lavalier microphones. There are many lavalier microphones that you can adapt to a smartphone. Here's an example of one that you can connect using the audio to lightning dongle for any iOS device. Here's what the audio quality sounds like from a lavalier microphone that's connected to my smartphone. That sounds pretty good as well too, doesn't it? Another alternative is a small camera mount microphones. Uh, here's an example of one. And usually they come with a supplied windscreen. These two can be adapted to your smartphone, albeit with a special cable. This is what the audio quality sounds like from the camera top microphone that I've now attached to my iPhone. You'll also need a way to support your smartphone and you can buy these clips uh, through various different retailers. They vary in price. The cheapest option is to purchase a selfie stick from the dollar store, which usually have the correct tripod screw mount and then attach that to a tripod or some kind of support. This particular model has a cold shoe mount so you can mount the microphone to that. If you want that radio sound and you're only recording audio for voiceovers, you need a large diaphragm condenser microphone. This particular model requires external phantom power and an audio interface in order to make it work. Or alternatively, you can purchase a USB microphone, which is essentially a microphone with an analog to digital converter built into it so that you can just plug your USB directly into the microphone and away you go. Lighting. The cheapest lighting is the sun in the sky. Either sit next to a window with the light shining on your face or to the side, or use the weather app, figure out when it's gonna be a nice day and shoot your video outside. You may have difficulty in direct sunlight only because it will be so bright that you can barely see. So maybe dappled sunlight or, or if it's uh, overcast, that will give you sort of essentially very flat lighting, but it's better than sitting in the dark. If you want ultimate control over your lighting situation, the best option for you is low cost LED based lighting. These are very popular with YouTubers. They range from small uh, ones like this. They have variable intensity, which is very handy and variable color balance, which is also good so that you can balance them to your in-home lighting. Uh, the small ones run off Sony MPF batteries, so they actually don't even need any power and they will actually run for a surprisingly long time. Uh, this is a smaller unit and if you use two of these, you can actually shoot completely reasonable videos in a com utterly dark room with just two of these. But again, if you don't have any of this stuff, sit next to a window. Remember, perfect is the enemy of good. And so use whatever you have at your disposal and do the best job you can with it to connect with your students. Through practice, you will get better and better at making these and your students will appreciate every bit of effort you put into it. If you liked this video or thought it could be improved in some way, hit the thumbs up or leave a comment or send me an email at amacallister at or hit me up on Twitter at andrewmc.ca. Thanks.